I've been in the U.S. for only a couple of weeks. I got here with just a suitcase, with some clothes and my backpack, with my camera gear and nothing else. Fifteen days later, here I am in Yosemite National Park after having spent my first night in the new car with the new car camping setup that I'm going to show you in this video. I put it all together pretty fast because I had a very good idea of what I wanted, of what I needed. This is a setup that is centered around photography and it's pretty simple. It's down to basics, down to the essentials. It's all I need and nothing else. I don't even have a roof box yet. I don't know if I'm even going to need it. And at the very center of this setup, the most important piece in this puzzle is this big power station, the Vitamin Flash Speed 1500. And you'll see very soon why I say that it's so important, but basically it powers everything that I do here. First of all, I would like to introduce you all to Manolo. That's the name I gave to this 2021 Subaru Outback. It's got 72,000 miles on it, so it's far from being brand new, but it's everything that I'm going to need, I believe, and I hope it will last for a very long time. I chose this car because I think it hits the sweetest spot for me when it comes to off-road capabilities. It has enough high clearance, it has four-wheel drive. I'm not going to be doing anything crazy, so for what I do, this is more than enough. And it's also a pretty good car for just everyday use, to go to the grocery store, to run some errands, and it drives very well. And it's also one that I could afford. When I first saw this car online, I liked it, but when I found out that the dealership's name was Bill Brand, I knew there was no doubt. You see, Bill Brand is one of my favorite photographers and one of my biggest inspirations for my work, so I took that as a sign. Let's look at the inside now. Here on the front seats, I didn't do much other than putting these uh, seat covers on just to protect them because I get out and in the car quite a few times every day when I'm uh, on a photography road trip. And here, because I throw my camera bag on this uh, seat, on the passenger seat, so I can have all my cameras and lenses quickly available just in case I need them if I see uh, something. I also have my coats on top of the uh, camera bag and the raincoat. And on the ground, on the passenger seat, I have my, my hiking shoes and some water and the sling bag. Moving on to the back seats. Well, they are still here. This is a no-build setup. It's very simple, as I said. Even if I wanted to take them out of here to make for more space, for more room, I didn't have a place where to put them, to where to leave them while I was on the road, so there, it was not an option for me. But I like quite a lot having the seat now because it is a pretty comfortable working uh, space here. I'm just missing a table, a little desk like the one I have in Spain that is hanging from the uh, driver's seat. I'm gonna buy that. I'm not, I'm not gonna make it. I don't even have the materials or the resources to do it here in California, but I'm gonna get one online so I can just put my computer in here. I can also prepare some meals and eat uh, my breakfast, my lunch uh, from there. On the ground I have a little bit more water and under the driver's seat I have a foldable toilet for emergencies. Oh, and I forgot I have this privacy curtain here too that you can open. With this, uh, it stays closed with uh, Velcro so I can see while I'm driving but also at night when I have, when I want some privacy back here. I just put it there. I can uh, just make this a little bit tighter so the uh, the curtain goes a little bit higher and it offers just enough privacy for the places where I'm camping. This is not a blackout curtain or anything like that. If you are, uh, if you have light back here, well, people are gonna see it from there, so. And by the way, I'm gonna leave uh, links in the description down below to all of the items that you see here, just in case you think it could be useful for, for your own setup. All right, let's talk about the bed. This is very important because a good night's sleep it is key for good photography because if you're gonna be out there the whole day fighting the conditions, hiking to remote locations, uh, getting up early for sunrise and staying up late until sunset, you need to get some good rest at night so you can do it all over again the following day. That's what I got a four inch thick memory foam mattress. This is a foldable mattress. It's made in uh, three pieces so you can fold it and it doesn't take much room here in the back of the car when it's not in camping mode. 
Of course, I'll have to test it out a little bit more because I only spent one night in this car, but it was very comfortable. On top of the mattress, I have a zero degree sleeping bag and that is supposed to be Fahrenheit. Now, I don't know if the, this sleeping bag is actually that good or it's gonna be good enough for those low temperatures. It was 32 degrees Fahrenheit last, Fahrenheit last night. I was a little bit chilly. Thankfully, I had another item that helped quite a lot that we'll talk about uh, pretty soon. But the thing that I like the most about this bed is that all of this rests on top of a camping cot that is leaving me some eight inches under the bed, under the mattress, under myself when I'm sleeping, room to store stuff. So I don't need to have a build, I don't need to build a platform and have it here permanently or semi-permanently. I can fold all of this very easily and I can have the car back to being a regular passenger, passenger car in under, I don't know, 20 or 30 minutes tops. The biggest downside to this is that while the Outback is a pretty long car, I am 6'2 and I can just stretch all the way here. It is very comfortable that way. I don't have a lot of headroom and even less with the cot like this. I cannot sit up on the bed at all and even getting on the bed at night is a little bit challenging but I mean totally doable and I rather have the space. This is behind the passenger's seat now. As you can see I have a nice pillow there too that I didn't mention. There is a little pocket here to put your phone or whatever the keys at night. Another thing that I have under the bed is the tray thingy that came in the uh, trunk in the car. Unfortunately I can't use it because the camping cot is pretty high and I really miss having that tray because I used it quite a lot in uh, my setup in Spain to just put stuff at night to prepare my meals from the back of the car and whatnot. There are some more spaces here on the doors. That I still don't have anything in there. You can see my suitcase. I still have it, of course. I'm not going to throw it away. I didn't know what to do with it. And it's actually pretty convenient here because it's holding the bed there a little bit. And it serves now as a little storage for some junk that I have in there, but not very much. It's pretty much empty. As I said, the Outback is a pretty long car, or at least it is long for me. I'm not used to a car this big. I have a lot of space behind the back seat. As you can see, I have the power station and this box here. This is a cardboard box. It's the box that the battery came in. I use it now to just store some junk, some food, and some uh, utensils, and some paper towels, toilet paper, and whatnot. I might get a better looking box in the future. Maybe not. I can also stack up more on top of this one if I want. But for now, is working just fine. My camera battery just uh, died, which is pretty convenient because I was going to talk about the power station now. So I'm going to plug it in here so it starts charging right away. This is one of the things that I like the most about having a battery with me on photography road trips. I don't have to wait until the night to start charging things. I can charge them right away. This power station powers all the devices that I use, of course, my cameras, my drone, my computer, my phone, my watch. I charge all of that with this big battery, but it also powers all the lighting I have in this car. So far, that is a reading light with a rechargeable battery and a flashlight with also a rechargeable battery. Of course, all I have to do when they run out of battery is to just plug them in here and I'll have light again. I'm trying to avoid this time uh, lights with uh, AA or AAA batteries because I never happen to have them and if I have them I can never find them. I think this is gonna work better for me. But wait, there is so much more I can do and I do with these batteries. So far we've only talked about this part right here, the USB port. It has four USB-A ports and two USB-C ports that can give out uh, up to 100 watts each, so that is perfect for charging laptops and other devices. But as you can see, it also comes with three regular AC outlets able to uh, power appliances. I plug in my um, electric kettle here to make my coffee, to make my oatmeal. I don't have one now. I'm thinking about getting one in the future, an electric pot to cook 
with it. I can also plug it in here. I could also bring my instant pot. I don't have it right now here with me, but I could also plug it here and prepare my meals with that if I wanted to. I'm also trying to avoid propane or any other kind of gas because I'm usually somewhere where the weather is not very nice. That's what I seek for my photography. So the conditions are usually not the best to be cooking outside anyway. So I like to prepare my meals inside and there an electric Everything is much better, in my opinion, than playing with fire and gas inside a vehicle. It also has a 12 volt outlet, of course. This power station can power all of those devices and appliances for quite a while because, as you can see, it's pretty big. It has a 1500 watts hour that is twice as big as the one that I have in Spain, and I never run out of battery with that one, so I'm not expecting to do it with this one. This power station can be charged in three different ways. You can plug it into a regular AC outlet at home, at a campground or whatever. It can charge up to 1500 watts. So that means that it can go all the way from zero to 100% in just one hour. That is amazing. If you don't have access to those, you can also use a solar panel. It supports, I believe that, yeah, up to 400 watts. So that's pretty good between four and five hours to charge the whole thing. But my favorite way to charge this battery is of course, while I'm driving, because most of the time I don't have access to a AC outlet. Most of the time I'm not camping in campgrounds and when I do I usually don't have electricity and again because the weather conditions are usually not sunny where I am I do that on purpose. Well so my favorite way to charge it again is while I drive. The Outback has a 12 volt outlet on the other side where I plug it and it charges in a reasonable amount of time. Of course it's slower than the other two and it, the limitation comes more from the car than from the power station. I think that the power station can take up to 200 watts but with this car I think it's gonna be just 120 so that means that it's gonna take 10 to 12 hours to charge the whole thing but I don't use the the whole battery I don't go through the whole capacity the 1500 watt hour in one day of course I only use 10 to 20 percent every day and that is enough I drive enough that I can charge that amount. I can get it back to close to 100% or high enough to uh, keep me uh, power for, for, for a while. But wait, because we are not done with this power station, not even close. One of my favorite things is actually the flat top design because that means that I can put stuff on top. I could put uh, uh, boxes, storage boxes. I might buy some and maybe secure them with a bungee cord to the uh, handles here. You could also get an extra battery to double the capacity of this one and just put it on top. Many things that you can do thanks to this design. And another great thing is this little shelf, secret shelf it's got in here that I use to uh, keep the cables, the charging cables away and even the chargers for my battery. So that is pretty useful. Talking about useful, I think you're gonna love this or at least I do love it. You might have noticed this port here is a jumper cable so you can get these clamps connected to that port and jump start your car if you ever run out of battery. This is pretty amazing because until now I had another standalone battery with its own clamps to perform that function but now I can do it with this one so I don't need another extra battery or anything like that or rely on another car to pass by to rescue me. I can do it with this. There are so many other great things to say about this battery but the last one that I wanted to mention is the battery technology that they used is the Life PO4 I think that's how you pronounce it but anyway it's a new wish technology a new wish kind of battery that should last much longer than your traditional lithium-ion batteries. This is rated to at least 3000 cycles, so that is years and years of use. And that means that this one is going to come with me on many, many trips to come in the next few years. Another thing the battery powers is this right here. I'll show you this electric blanket that powers in one of the USB ports and that you can turn on just like that. Uh, it's not a very powerful one, it's not like 
one of those that you have at home. You can plug one of those into that battery, by the way, it's no problem. That battery is powerful enough. But I went with this one because it doesn't use that much power, only 14 watts. So I can put it here in my sleeping bag before I go to bed. So it's pretty warm when I get in there and I leave it for, I don't know, another half an hour or so on. And then just I, I turn it off before I fall. Uh, asleep. Nothing amazing, but again, just enough for those cold nights. What else? Well, on this side I have paper towels, trash bags, and on the other side the boring but very necessary safety stuff. I have some spikes for the shoes to walk on ice and a first aid kit still with the label. I haven't even opened it. I'm pretty hungry, so I'm gonna finish the video and make breakfast. But before I do that, I just wanted to mention just a couple more things about safety. I have uh, under here a full-size spare tire. I have a tire inflator and snow chains. All of those are very important, so you don't get stuck in the middle of nowhere. And in my camera bag, I also have a satellite communicator. Just in case I don't have cell service, I have to call for help or even just send a message to my family to let them know that I'm okay. I hope the video was useful. If you have any questions about this setup or recommendations, please uh, leave them in the comments down below. And now I'm gonna have breakfast and go enjoy Yosemite National Park.